Oh no, you have just ported into town in Salem and this window popped up and it says you have just been diseased. Hey guys, my name is Zach and welcome to the disease video of Salem. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about the different kinds of diseases, how you can treat them and cure them, and basically how you should uh, do, uh, how, how you should manage the whole thing. So, first of all, uh, this menu will pop up the first time you get sick and most importantly, do not panic. Don't worry, you have plenty of time to deal with this and there are a few ways to solve this problem, even if you're not capable of doing it yourself. So, first thing I'm gonna do is go over the four different types of diseases, their symptoms, and basically what you can do to try and cure yourself with it. So, this first menu that does pop up does actually explain uh, everything uh, very, very nicely, from the different types of diseases to preventing future diseases. And the the dangerous thing about disease is you're gonna get a bar, so this rat symbol will be next to your portrait in the top left corner, and if that bar becomes full, your biles will start to drain. And uh, if that reaches zero, you actually die. You get, you take permanent max humor damage, and it, you can actually perma die from disease. So, what are the four diseases? Well, the four diseases are big pox, frontier flux, land legs, and maroon fever. So uh, th there's the difficult part about these diseases is you don't actually know which one you get. Medicine and sickness in Salem is a bit more like medicine and sickness in the real world. You just don't know exactly what you have, you don't know exactly what strain of disease you have, and there's no magic medicinal cure that's gonna cure you. It's not like, oh, I have this disease, I use this item, I'm cured. That would be too easy for Salem. So. What are the symptoms of big pox? Well, a big pox is identified as coughing, frontier flux, uh, the symptoms are puking, land legs, the symptom is dizziness, and maroon fever, the symptoms are headaches. And headaches and dizziness can be a bit confused together, but headaches have a sort of uh, moaning noise that goes along with it. Now, the difficult part about identifying what, uh, what disease you have is that when you first get sick, and just throughout your sickness, all four symptoms will be displayed. You will see all four of them. And the only way to know for sure, or to have a better idea of what disease you actually have, is to wait until your disease bar fills up a bit further. You don't have to wait so, so long to start seeing one symptom be more prevalent than the others. But uh, you want, you don't have to wait until like it's it's halfway full, but after maybe half an hour to an hour, uh, your one symptom will start to show more than the other. So for example, uh, when I got sick, I actually uh, started showing coughing symptoms more than anything else. So how do you actually get sick? Well, I'm gonna show you here. Let me close this window here. And if you get sick, basically you're most likely going to be getting sick from plague alts in town or just diseased bodies in town. So uh, you might have noticed in my previous videos, I've been walking around these sorts of characters. So you can see this, this lady over here, this blonde haired lady, it's a character in basic pilgrim robes, not moving. Uh, generally, don't go near those characters. And also, if you see over here, there's a bunch of bodies, uh, tend to, usually naked or, or not wearing any clothes whatsoever. Uh, these sort of bodies, don't go near them either, because they also are most likely sick. Now, I've gone quite a while without getting sick at all, uh, because I managed to avoid these, but there was this one time where I potted into town, and just as I spawned, a character right, who was right next to where I was spawning coughed on me, and I got the disease message, which is very scary and very, uh, 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 well, disconcerting, really. So, how do we deal with these diseases? Well, let's go over the four cures. So let me port back to my base and show you the four different cures. Oh, and while I port here, I can also tell you about the other two ways, or well, two other ways of getting diseases. One is rats. If you go into, like, travel far into the wilderness and enter darkness, you're gonna find plague rats, which are very, very dangerous. And also, uh, if you were playing quite a while ago, you might have gotten a gift from the developers in your mail called Cozy blanket. Uh, the cozy blanket is sort of like what uh, they did to the new world in the real real life. It, it's covered in diseases. Don't snuggle with the cozy blanket. Anyway, here we are back into 
our base here. Okay, so what are the four cures for these diseases? Again, let's look over the four symptoms we have. We have the coughing one, big pox, the puking one, frontier flux, the dizziness one, land legs, and the headache one, maroon fever. And uh, basically there are four cures for this. And the cure for big pox is willow bark tonic. Frontier flux has columbine paste, land legs has smelling salts, and uh, maroon fever has a leech. Now, these, 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 these cures sort of work differently, and we're gonna go through these one by one. And before we continue, the three skills that you do need for, for curing all your diseases is agriculture, gardening, and bark gathering. These skills are all pretty low level, so you should already have them, but if you don't, be sure to get these three skills. We're gonna start with willow bark tonic. And willow bark tonic is something that you have to cook up in a clay pot over a fireplace. So, uh, I have a clay pot over a fireplace here. Let me just grab this uh, clay pot. And the first thing you wanna do is make sure that it's full of water. So I have this bucket of water here. I'm gonna fill my clay pot with water. You should know how to do this from previous videos. And I'm gonna uh, then need to go out and grab a couple ingredients. Willow bark tonic, of course, uh, requires um, some willow bark. And willow bark is a, a tree that sort of looks like this greenish tree. I'm gonna go over to one and show you what it looks like. All right, here we go. Here's a willow bark tree and it's sort of like this, this greeny sort of drooping tree. And if you right click it, you can peel bark. This is if you have the skill uh, bark. Uh, let me show you the skills we need here. Uh, we need a bark gathering to start peeling these trees. But anyway, we got three bits of bark here. We might as well get up to four because four can fit in the pots. I'm gonna head over to this other willow bark tree, peel a bit more bark off of it. And there we go, we've got some bark. So now I'm gonna head back to my base and uh, we can boil this stuff up. All right, here we are back at home. So the first thing we do is we put the clay pot filled with water over the fireplace and then we right click the clay pot, open it and we put in the four units of willow bark. And this is gonna boil up the willow bark and it'll become soaked bark which you can dry on the, the drying frame and then eventually turn that into other things. But uh, after you boil these units of willow bark inside the willow bark tonic, if you take the pot off the fire, you will actually get the clay pot and its contents will be a number of liters of tonic of willow bark. And this is actually the cure for big pox, the coughing one. So to use it, you just pick up the clay pot and then you have to have a bark cup. So if we have a look at, if we go into craft and I think it's under, uh, let me just find it here. It's under bag sacks and vessels a bark cup and it takes two dried bark to make this bark cup so it's handy that we're boiling willow bark which we can then dry and then use two of them to make a bark cup no problem there and then once you have the clay pot full of willow bark tonic we pick up the clay pot and right click on the bark cup and it put takes 0.2 liters of the uh, willow bark tonic into this bark cup which now says full bark cup so then if we open up our equipment here we can actually slot the bark cup into our hand and when it's there we can right click it and you can drink sip or empty and uh, you can sip it and it'll just take like one dose of the medicine uh, so you can try and sip it uh, until um, this is if you know you have big pox, yeah? so you're, you're seeing a lot of coughing. You can try sip it until you get cured. Drinking will drink the whole cup. And one uh, side effect of drinking liquids here, which you might not have encountered before, is you get a debuff, quaffed and quenched. And the debuff doesn't actually do anything to you, but eventually you, you if you drink too much, you won't be able to drink anymore. And just almost universally drinking liquids has a beneficial effect it's like restoring your inspiration or medicine or things like that so if you do get quaffed and quenched then don't worry to counteract quaffed and quenched you just have to go into gluttony mode and eat a bunch of food and then your quaffed and quench will be reduced so next uh next uh medicine we're gonna go over is the one for frontier flux the puking one uh, so it's called frontier flux because it's sort of throwing you off sort of thing 
So for that, we need to cure it with columbine paste. And columbine paste is uh, somewhat easier to make, except you need to build something to, to make it. So first thing you do uh, is you need to find some wild columbine. It's this sort of red flower with a yellow center. If you've been doing some gardening, you can see here, I'm actually growing some uh, columbine over here and I can harvest it pretty regularly enough to make enough medicine. Then you need to get a bucket of water, and if you actually go into craft, potions and medicines, you'll find columbine paste there, if you, if you have the required skill. And you can see it needs a wild columbine, some water, and myrtle oak leaves. So I happen to have a myrtle oak bush in my base here. So let me just go ahead and grab two leaves, because we need those. So here we go, pick leaves. There's one, there's two. So we got two, but if we try to craft, it says you need to use a grinder. So a grinder is maybe a new structure that you'll have to build, and it looks like this stone thing over here. I've got this stone grinder. And to build a grinder, it's relatively easy, but uh, it's under build, tools and utilities, grindstone. And uh, you, if you place it down here, You'll see it takes 25 stones, no problem, 5 granite, which might be a little harder to find, and 3 flint. So if granite, if you're not near, uh, uh, flint is pretty much everywhere, stones are pretty much everywhere. Uh, granite, if you're not near an arid region, you can go to the main town in Providence and head south, and you'll come across an arid land pretty much connected to uh, the town itself. And if you go further south, you'll find more arid land where granite does spawn. Remember, if you're looking for granite, it doesn't spawn uh, just so readily. If you go into movement and turn on forage, you have a higher chance of finding granite. So that'll be very useful. Anyway, once you have a grindstone, you right click on it and you can press craft and you'll start crafting your columbine paste. So there we go. I now have, it takes a bit of water and uh, the wild columbine and two myrtle oak leaves. And there we go. We have another uh, s stack of columbine paste. It has three uses, so this is quite useful. Again, remember, uh, just taking medicine straight away might not cure you. It might take multiple doses. All right, so on to the next uh, uh, disease here. It's land legs. Land legs is the one where you just sort of look wobbly for a short time. And uh, if you look wobbly like that without making any noise, then you have land legs. That's if that symptom appears more than others. So if you have land legs, you need to craft smelling salts. Smelling salts is something that you can't really craft um, uh, early on in the game because the problem with smelling salts, if you're going to craft potions and medicines smelling salts, you're gonna need any animal antlers. So that means you have to be able to hunt deer. If you can hunt deer and you have antlers, then you can just go ahead and use the grindstone and craft the smelling salts. You gotta use a grindstone again for this. But uh, you can often find these medicines uh, available in the player stalls as well. I actually got lucky that someone at this current moment selling smelling salts for five silver each. So I just bought one straight away because uh, I, at this point I can't hunt deer. But if you can hunt deer and your biles are probably around uh, 50 or higher, then you're probably going to be okay hunting deer. Uh, and you, then you can go ahead and butcher them for their antlers. And then finally, the, the last disease we're going to go over here is maroon fever. This maroon fever is when you have a headache and that's when you do a sort of wobble and you also do a moaning noise like uh sort of thing. And if you see that symptom more than the others, then you're gonna need to find a leech. A leech is sort of readily available if you find any swamp biomes, but they can still be a bit tricky to find. Uh, you can also uh, quite often find leeches being sold at the player stalls if you're desperate. But uh, if, if you have a leech on hand, this one is applied somewhat differently. We have to apply the leech to the shirt slot in your equipment tab. So I'm gonna take off my cotton shirt here, go shirtless for a short while, and I'm gonna take the leech and place it onto my uh, my uh, body here, on, on the shirt slot. And you can actually see in the, the model, there's a leech on me. And this leech is gonna start draining my blood. And this is, every time it drains, it can drain like two or three times, and the, oh, there we go it's now become fatter. So I'm gonna take the leech off now. And you can see that if I mouse over the leech, it actually says contains Gamerzak's blood, blood-filled leech. A leech on your torso will slowly drain your blood. If you're suffering from maroon fever, this has been rumored to cure it. And once it drains blood, you can actually right-click it and drain it and you'll actually get Pilgrim's blood. But I'm gonna keep this leech on hand. 
uh, because uh, if I do get Maroon Fever, then I want to put the leech back on. So I'm going to put my shirt back on here. But every time it drains, it's going to have a chance of curing your Maroon Fever. That's if you have the headache symptom. So uh, that pretty much covers the, the four main diseases and how to cure it. Some of these are pretty easy to make. The willow bark tonic takes a bit of time. Columbine paste, just have the flower on hand, that sort of thing. Smelling salts and leeches, a bit harder to get, but uh, uh, still, uh, if, you, if you can find these things, then it's best that you have all four cures on hand. Because if you do get disease, then it's going to be a bit difficult to, to find these things. And you're going to panic. If you don't have the cure on hand, then uh, you're, you're going to have some difficulty with that. And finally, I did mention the prevention of disease. There's a couple uh, ways to, to prevent diseases from happening. The, the easiest is probably, well, if you are willing to spend money, you can actually buy the apothecary pack from the Salem store. And it comes with the miasma mask, which allows you to, you wear, it's sort of like a, a mask that you wear, and it actually prevents diseases from happening. Alternatively, you can go to the clothing store in the main city of Salem. There's this lady in the marketplace and uh, she sells a plague mask, but it's like 700 silver. So it's really expensive. And finally, if you actually are high level, if I let me see if I can see the skill here. If you can actually get uh, s skills like steam distillation and you really go into the apothecary line and all of that, eventually you'll be able to make berry juice. And berry juice is something that you can drink and if you drink it, you'll actually be immune to diseases for a number of hours. So all those high level players walking around not wearing plague masks, they're most likely drinking berry juice. But uh, that's also sort of like a... Uh, a status symbol to show that, oh, I can walk around the main town and not worry about disease because I'm so high level or I'm rich enough to buy berry juice, that sort of thing. Oh, and while you're sick and you're waiting for your sickness to get worse so you can tell which disease you actually have as you wait for one symptom to show more prominently than the others, if you, uh, it's courtesy to not go near other people and get them sick as well. So it's best for you to stay away from them or stay at home if possible. But if you do happen to have what's called a silk hanky, which is a pr relatively higher level item, which you probably can't get at this point, but if you do have a silk hanky, you can equip it in your hand. And if you do equip that, then you can walk walk around being sick and not get other people sick. So that, that's a, a nice courtesy thing that you can do. So uh, we've been over all the diseases, the four different diseases in Salem, how you can catch them, watch out for plague alts, rats, and the cozy blanket if you happen to have one of those, and also uh, how to cure them. And remember the, the symptoms and how disease works is when you get sick, you're gonna exhibit all four symptoms. Don't panic, don't take cures because here's the final point. If you take the wrong cure, so let's say I have big pox and I'm supposed to take willow bark tonic. If I take columbine paste instead, that will actually lower the chance of the correct cure curing me. That's right, if you take the wrong medicine, it's bad for you. It makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> so, uh, if you don't want to die, let uh, the disease progress a little bit and keep track of the symptoms. How many coughs, how many wobbles, how many vomits. And for example, when I got sick with uh, big pox, I exhibited 15 coughs, uh, two pukes, um, like four dizziness and maybe five headaches. So the coughing was just so much more, this is over a period of like half an hour, the coughing was so much more than any of the other symptoms. So I was pretty confident that I had willow bark, uh, I needed willow bark tonic to cure my big pox. And uh, it turns out that was true. All right, so that pretty much wraps up the disease video and everything you need to know in uh, this. Uh, and hopefully this is gonna be very useful for you. All right, so remember, if you'd like to support the channel and uh, the game itself, there's a uh, referral link in the description box down below. You know how a referral link works. And that's it for now. All right, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.